In fighting games, some fighting styles get straight to the point when hurting their opponent, but others have that slow burn, or should I say, slow poison. One tricky playstyle that we see on occasion involves fighters finding ways to inject poison into their opponents to slowly drain their health bar while they attack them with other methods at the same time, or just find even more ways to trap them and start over the toxic process. We'll be looking at fighters that specialize in the art of poison, usually going for bits of damage over time, but also finding innovative ways to burn the opponent with concoctions of chemicals that need to be handled very carefully. Some Sometimes the poison's just a single move in a larger arsenal, other times it's their main strategy. So let's see who's more toxic than that Britney Spears song. And there won't be any limits on how many characters from a series I include on this list, so the poison keeps on flowing for some franchises. And co-hosting with me, back by popular demand, is my own mom. Hi everyone! Ever since Dorothy fell asleep in a field of poppies poisoned by the Wicked Witch and the Wizard of Oz, I realized how potent yet beautiful poison could be as a weapon, so I'm happy to be back to discuss this topic. Now, let's administer the top 10 poison fighting game characters. Number 10, Yoshimitsu from Tekken and Soul Calibur. Yoshimitsu is best known for being the centric ninja samurai robot cyborg originating in Tekken, who has some of the most unpredictable moves. Most of his moves involve spinning or sitting down. Have you seen this man try to heal himself? He's gotta know how wacky he looks. And of course, there's the move where he stabs himself, where you better make sure it hits or else you're asking to lose. Included in his arsenal of offbeat attacks, he has his deadly poison breath, where inexplicably, he shoots poison out of his mouth that causes the opponent to fall to their knees. When it comes to Yoshimitsu attacks, I don't see many people talk about this one. I think part of the reason is Yoshimitsu has so many crazy attacks, we're not shocked that he'd randomly have poison breath that nearly knocks the opponent unconscious. Wow, his poison breath is really potent. If he wins the match, his prize should be a lifetime supply of mouthwash and breath mints. What's this guy's diet like? I wonder if the color of the poison is based on what he ate. He definitely needs to lay off the spicy foods. Well, the move that leads into the poison is called bad stomach, so I think that implies it's something he ate, or he's just filled with poison that's acting up on him at that exact moment. Though, I always assumed the bad stomach was from him getting dizzy from all the spinning he was doing, and it made him sick. Any reasoning works, really. Why is he wearing all that body armor? With that breath, he doesn't need it. One whiff, and it's lights out for his opponent. Though his costume does have a certain eye appeal during a fighting match. To answer your question about the armor, he probably doesn't need it in Tekken since he's mostly fighting hand-to-hand -hand combat fighters, but in Soul Calibur, it's full of other steel-bladed weapons, so it's probably more useful over there. However, he changes into a new elaborate costume each game, so he does need it for the sake of tradition. As for the poison, another reason I think it's a lesser discussed move of his is because it's not as useful as his other stances. It's slow to start up, but it's good to randomly throw out there to catch your opponent off guard. It doesn't do continuous damage over time like other poison attacks we'll see later on this list, so its main purpose is to stun the opponent for a second, allowing Yoshimitsu to follow up with other attacks. It may not be the most efficient way to hold your opponent in place, but you get to use a cool purple cloud when you do it, so why not try it out? Ninja Sun Bear! Deliver me your soul! Bitterness, let me guide you to hell! Number 9, Piranha Plant in Super Smash Bros. Piranha Plant is one of the most recognizable Mario enemies, and is sort of the representative of the common Mario goons in this game. Its inclusion in Smash Bros was polarizing to say the least, but I've always enjoyed having him around, since Smash Bros is the big crossover game, and Mario enemies are some of the most iconic video game obstacles of all time. Not to mention, Smash Bros always balances out the goofier characters with the more serious ones, and I I'm biased because I like silly things, so I'm Team Piranha Plant. Its move set mostly involves hitting with its head and body, biting with its teeth, and playing with its favorite spike ball. But the one move that lands it on this list is its Poison Breath. It's Piranha Plant's side special, based on the putrid piranhas of the Paper Mario series. And as the attack name implies, it spits out a cloud of poison. The poison is a good tool for racking up damage. It doesn't put the opponent in a state of hit-stun or knockback. It's 
just there for pure damage when it lingers on the field for a bit, so the opponent has complete free will to move around it. They just get hurt a little every time they walk into it or if you spray it directly on them. The poison damage doesn't continue after the cloud is gone, so it hurts to breathe in, but only when you can see it. If the opponent stands in the poison the whole time it's active, it can deal quite a bit of damage, and you can charge it to deal even more damage. However, your opponent is likely going to be moving around, so don't bank on getting all that damage from the poison. Still though, the poison breath is a great tool to set up alongside your other attacks to add in those extra bits of damage, so mix in all your favorite moves with the poison. I think the sharp pointed teeth are his best looking asset, though his planter is a hindrance. He does make up for it though with his piranacopter move. The purple poison breath is a nice visual effect, deadly, but you see it coming. Though I think if his opponent had a gas mask and a spray bottle of weed killer, he could exterminate him or knock him unconscious and pull his teeth out. Though there'd still be the poison breath, which makes it such a deliciously deadly weapon. Surely you wouldn't have to do something so drastic to it. The plan seems like a friendly dude if you get to know him. Or maybe I'd fall into the false sense of security it feigns and end up like Mario. I just can't resist that constant smile. <laughs> Number 8, Noxious Reptile in Mortal Kombat X. Reptile has gone through many iterations in Mortal Kombat's history, with three major timelines in the series. Sometimes he's a reptile guy in a human disguise, other times he's a humanoid reptile guy, and now he's a bipedal reptile guy who can transform into a human appearance and swaps between the forms. However, the most consistent thing about his fighting style in all of this is he likes to spew green acidic liquids. Reptile Reptile's acid spit and ball are some of the most iconic attacks by him that either hurt a little or just melt through anything depending on the scenario. However, this acid has never really shown to be poisonous, and looking at Reptile, you'd think he would be poisonous in some way because plenty of reptiles are poisonous or venomous in the wild, and dripping green liquid is sometimes a trait of poison. But nope, for a majority of his existence, his various bodily functions are just acid with equally damaging attributes as poison. However, one game explicitly listed one of his new powers as poisonous, Mortal Kombat X. In this game, you had three choices of fighting styles for all the characters. Reptile had Nimble, which was his speed fighting style, Deceptive, which was his invisibility focused style, and Noxious, which was the poison variation. With Noxious Reptile, he's constantly emitting a cloud of poison that sticks around him the whole match. If the opponent goes near Reptile, regardless of if they have the advantage or not, not, they take a bit of damage every second from the poisonous gas that Reptile naturally releases, and he never has this turned off. It's always going. He can even do a move that makes the gas cloud bigger and brighter. However, his poison is mostly passive. He's actively polluting the air, but you can't win on the proximity damage alone. You still have to use his other skills to win. He's got speed, acid, and anything else that comes with being a monster man, so pick your favorite things. He looks like he could easily fit into any science fiction movie that has aliens oozing glowing toxic liquid from its orifices. I like all of his moves from his slide attack, zip dash, pounce, and overhead attacks, but I have to say my favorite is his force ball and acid spit. Takes me back to the days when my students got stomach virus in my classroom. Their toxic vomit could rival reptiles any day, especially after lunch. But at least watching it on the screen, I don't have to do any of the cleanup. For how cool reptiles poison was in this game, his acid was kind of lame in the story mode. There's a point when Reptile directly hits Takeda in the eyes with his acid, and you think Takeda's gonna get harmed in some way from it, but Jackie just uses regular water to rinse out his eyes, and he retains no damage. Like, I get that they're prepared for supernatural creatures, but basic water nullifies Reptile's acid. We could've fought him this whole time with super soakers. At least they made him smart in the story mode to make up for that scene. Just remember, if you fight Reptile, pack some eye drops. Reptile wins.
Ivies. Number 7, Poison Ivy in Injustice 2. Her name carries her on this list. You can't have a name like that and not be poisonous. Though the poison is more a part of her backstory, since she's a botanist who can combine plants and plant-related byproducts for various poisonous concoctions. This is also the fifth time she's made it on a list by me, which means that she's one of the most reoccurring characters here. Though as much as poison's a part of her history, her overall poison attacks and her moveset are pretty limited. Her main poison attack is her Poison Kiss, where she keeps the poison that she's immune to around her mouth, kisses the opponent, and then slaps them cause it's funny. However, if you enhance the kiss, she lets the poison linger for a bit. This makes the opponent woozy and leaves them in a stun state so she can combo them a bit longer. But outside of that, she doesn't appear to have any other moves in this game that are overtly poisonous. She could have some poison sprinkled into some other random attacks, like her plant creatures that spit out unspecified ooze or some of the dust effects when she hits her opponent. But overall, the kiss is her main source of poison. The poison doesn't even do damage over time like a lot of other moves on this list. However, she does still have a continuous damage move. Her bed of thorns does a little bit of damage to her opponent every second that they're standing on them. So it's kinda like poison, but I think it just hurts because they're prickly. The way that she uses plants in her moveset is really cool, so despite the lack of poison, don't let that distract you from how fun she is. Her feed me super move that eventually summons a deadly Venus fly trap to chew on her opponent is hands down my favorite move, and her kiss of death is also potently delicious to watch. I know I've said this before in a previous video, but every time I see her emerge from that giant plant as it peels a layer of leaves away one by one, it reminds me of my most favorite episode in the original Lost in Space titled Attack of the Monster Plants, where Judy Robinson is cloned into a plant creature. Luckily, Poison Ivy won't turn you into a plant creature. She'll just kill you with them. Poison Ivy wins. Number 6, Fugo and Jojo's Bizarre Adventure All-Star Battle. In the source material, Fugo didn't do much compared to the rest of his crew. He was in part 5 of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, working for the Mafia under secondary protagonist Bucciarati, but when the main protagonist Giorno joins the group and helps push them towards turning against the Mafia with Bucciarati's support, Fugo said, nope, I'm out, midway through the part, solidifying him as untapped potential. Before that, he did the torture dance, had one fight where his stand was mostly locked out, we learned that it can release a deadly poison virus that can disintegrate bodies, and then he was gone. There's more you can go into about the history of Fugo and his intended role in the latter half of the part, but if you just watched the anime or read the manga, he leaves a lot to be desired, at least for me. However, the JoJo's fighting game gave us a lot more of a showcase of how deadly his stand could be. His stand is Purple Haze, and it indeed lives up to the name beyond the music reference. It releases a purple mist that leaves the opponent poisoned, and all while doing so, he does the go-to stand attack of rapid punches. However, the punches are important. On his fists, his stand has capsules that can break, releasing a deadly virus, so a few hard punches and that poison's going everywhere. In the context of the series, the poison is extremely toned down in the game, where in the manga, it was harmful to everyone in the area, including any allies and even the user, so the only way to avoid it was to get out of the way. I like that the game emulates how the poison affects everyone, where Fugo usually gets poisoned by his own attacks when infecting the opponent, though strategically, I think Fugo would distance himself from his stand more than the game lets him. And the poison would probably kill you within 30 seconds canonically, as your body implodes, rather than giving you a chance to fight back like it does in-game, though we do get a reference to how the virus eats away at the body in his super move, where we get a visual effect of the opponent's body dissolving as Fugo does one of his more risky maneuvers by sneak attacking the virus through his mouth all while being able to walk away unharmed. Is he trying to fight or walk in a fashion show with his slim physique and perfectly posed arm on hip stance? Get the man some patches for his outfit. His purple haze stand and purple haze distortion are the stars of the match. I love the way they barrage his opponent with frantic punches. Though I 
think my favorite is when Fugo bites down on a homicidal virus capsule and purposely blows purple poison at his opponent. I like that the franticness of his stand overall is also because it's incredibly anxious about staying clean gives it some extra personality. Fugo's virus may be underpowered for the game, but if you play your combos right, it feels like the poison's at full strength. <laughs> Number 5, Valentine from Skullgirls. Valentine is a ninja nurse who's fighting to take down the main villain of the game, the Skullheart, a living item that can grant any wish, but turns the user into its powerful servant for world domination, known as the Skullgirl. After Valentine's crew was killed off, she joins the Skullgirl so she can work undercover as a henchman to learn more about it to eventually take it down, though Valentine's research methods are not particularly particularly moral. How did she get a name like that? When I think of Valentine's, I think of love and sappy sweetness. She's so opposite of that. She seems more like a sinister character that you would see in any slasher movie with a protagonist being chased in a hospital setting. Actually, there's a reason behind her name. Her original crew, The Last Hope, was a group of nurses each named after a holiday, with her obviously being named after Valentine's Day. But the reference kind of gets lost in translation when the rest of her crew isn't around. Despite only being undercover, Valentine's Valentine plays the evil role pretty well with how she fights. It's all a bunch of medical tools used for the opposite purposes of healing. Just to name a few, she's got bone saws that saw bones, body bags that bag bodies, and scalpels that, uh, cut things. But most importantly for this list, she has syringes filled with three types of poison. The pink poison is your traditional fighting game poison, where it slowly chips away at your opponent's health over time until Valentine is hit again. The green poison puts the the opponent in hits done longer when hit by your attacks, giving you a bigger window to chain together moves for longer combos, and the orange causes your opponent's inputs to lag over a period of time. I like all the options that she gives you for poison. It's not just the damage over time poison we see with a lot of other characters, but you still have that choice if you like the old classic. To pick your poison, she has a move that lets you load up a dose, with certain button commands changing the poison. To inject your opponent, you have to use her basic projectile, which is usually the Dead Cross, a ninja throwing star with a puntastic name that looks like a legally distinct Red Cross logo. If you have a syringe loaded, the attack changes to the poison throw. However, it's one and done for each shot, so if it misses or if you want to throw more poison, you have to load up a new syringe before you can throw it again, or else the Dead Crosses will just come out instead. You can reliably connect with the syringe if you combo into it, or use her counter super move, which which hits the opponent point blank with the poison if you have it ready, so you're not just throwing wildly and hoping it hits. I definitely wouldn't want her giving me a shot. I still think I'm more afraid of the bone saw than I am of the loaded syringe. Even though I know, either way, I'm a goner if I encounter her. Death by poison or death by hemorrhaging, they're both bloody horrific. At the end of the day, it's hard to tell what's most deadly about Valentine. Is it her looks, her legs, her weapons, or her colorful, colorful poisons? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. Yeah. Lost the will to me. And now a word from our sponsors. Number 4, Lin from the King of Fighters. Lin is an assassin part of the Hizoku clan, who go wherever they are summoned. But when their leader goes rogue and starts killing off members, Lin is tasked with killing him for the honor and safety of the clan. And the way to get to the former leader was to find him in the main villain organization of the game, Nests, who just so happened to be involved with the tournament going on. So that's why Lin's here. He has no interest in small talk or fun, he just wants to get the fight it's over with to get to his goal. He's the serious, no-nonsense, cool guy of the roster, so all his flashiness is done to get in damage and not to show off. Being a trained assassin, his hand motions are light speed and razor sharp, going so fast that he can punch the floor, and his hand pops out from underground as if it's disconnected from his arm. But what about his poison? Well, his blood is made of a deadly poison that he uses to fight. 
it, where he's trained to be immune to it, but his opponent is not, so any time he bleeds, he's afflicting you with health draining poison. His main way of using the poison in his body is to spit it on the opponent. That mask isn't just for secrecy, he keeps it on to control how much poison he spits out. In a way, it's for your own safety. He can also transfer the poison from his fingertips, so after a few rapid strikes, your opponent will be pulsating purple. Kung Fu fighting to the nth degree. His physique is fabulous. I like the name of his trainer. I love all of his moves, especially his spit poison hand strikes and acrobatic maneuvers. He swiftly slices through his opponents as if they were made of butter. Poison blood never looks so good. Lin's a very underexplored character in the series, since once the storyline with Nests was done, so was he. It's a shame he didn't want to make friends and stick around, since I would have liked to see how they developed his smog breath over time. For a guy with poison blood, he didn't seem to do much overall with it. He was more focused on the hand swipes, so if they ever bring him back, he's got a whole circulatory system of possibilities. <laughs> Number 3, Devora from Mortal Kombat. Devora's another love em or hate em character. She's a hive of bee-like insects combined into a single bug woman body, and she goes around betraying everyone so she can protect her hive and end up on top. She works for the lead villain of both games that she's in, and even in doing so, you know she's just going to betray the highest ranking boss as soon as she gets a chance. In doing so, she kills a lot of fan favorite characters, and I really mean favorites. She killed off a version of Scorpion, arguably the most recognizable character in the series, so because of those kills, she's garnered a lot of hate. Though, I've mostly just disliked how much plot armor she gets. Sure, her side loses in the end, but she manages to sneak away before she faces any consequences for her actions. I would have just liked to see her get punished once. But when it comes to playstyle, there's nothing to hate. She's got fun moves with a lot of personality, and being based on a bee, you'd expect there to be poison somewhere. To which I say, depends on which version of her you choose. As with Reptile in Mortal Kombat X, her most poisonous attacks are locked away in a specific variation in that game called Venomous. Here, her hands drip green venom and do a bit of extra poison damage, and it basically affects all of her physical attacks. Her venom is potent, where even if she knocks you away, the extra dose of venom from her punches causes a bit of lasting damage. Her ovipositors are the most gnarly way to get the poison in the opponent, though, since she's just injecting that stuff right in you. Who knows what else she's putting in your body? Her bug spray move also utilizes the venom, but as a big ball of damaging goo. I like the creativity in her moveset, so it helps blur the lines if I should love her for her playstyle or hate her for her motivations. I don't like her mainly because she gives me flashback memories of this past summer when giant hornets invaded my backyard, sending the pest control guy screaming and running back to his truck. She even looks like they did. I haven't grown accustomed to her face and probably never will. I want to take a giant fly swatter and smash her to smithereens. She does have some interesting attacks though. I would like her quick strikes and spinning waves when she cocoons her opponents the best. And of course, the venomous goo spewing out of her abdomen is cool to watch. It's disgusting when she deposits larvae in her prey that eat their way out. And those projectile attacks attracting bugs that inflict multiple stings make me itchy just watching. Yeah, Mortal Kombat 11 made Devora way more gross overall, like with how she sends swarms, stings, and spins webs. Technically, none of those attacks are labeled as poisonous, but come on, look at the way she deposits all sorts of insect bodily fluids in her opponent. There's gotta be something poisonous in one of those attacks. Moral of the story, don't open your mouth around Devora. Devora wins. Number 2, Fong from Street Fighter. Fong is a weird character, both in how he fights and how he acts. Public opinion was generally negative about him at first, but I think players warmed up to him over time where they were fine with him by the end of Street Fighter V's life. He's not particularly a fan favorite, but honestly, I thought he was a cool character from the start. He fights using poison that's always active on his hands. He has careful control of what he touches and when he activates it. So despite him not being physically strong, he has an ability that can kill 
kill with the flick of the fingers. Though, I think what may have turned some people away from him is he was kinda silly personality-wise. He replaced Sagat on the Shadaloo team, so instead of being giant and stoic, he was doing dance moves and being all giddy or high-strung about Bison's plans. However, I never saw that as an issue. First off, I like goofy characters, but second, he still had a strong aura of being threatening as a villain. While he was eccentric, when he had to intimidate someone to stay out of his plans or do his bidding, he broke out the poison, showing that he'll melt you to a puddle of nothing if you don't listen. He could change his attitude right away. He was very competent and knew when he had to be serious. Even when he enters a match, he confidently says that he'll win within two minutes. He loves that number. And perhaps his outfit also didn't help his case, since that had a few silly parts to it too. But once again, I thought it was neat. When he made a cameo in Street Fighter VI with a new outfit, I saw dozens of comments saying that they finally made Fong look cool. And I was like, I thought he already looked cool. He's got the shades, the big hat, gives him an air of mysteriousness. I could see the sleeves being too much for some people, but I always thought it was a clever design that he has sleeves way bigger than his hands covered in poison, since he still needs to grab things without destroying them. The old sleeves were more of a safety precaution, which made it even cooler when they implemented a mechanic where he rolls them up to temporarily increase how long some of his poison attacks were active and increase their damage. And that brings us to the centerpiece of Fong, his poison moveset. If you liked his design, then the main deterrent would be his strange playstyle, which mostly is about setting up with small combos that ultimately leave your opponent poisoned to take damage over time, and set up more poison traps or projectiles so they keep on taking that damage. Your non-poison attacks are your unorthodox ways of punching and kicking, so you want to use those to either knock your opponent away to make it harder for them to avoid the incoming poison and poison on the floor, or do a little combo that ends with him jabbing the poison right into the opponent's sternum. It's just a few small hits and then, haha, extra poison. Expectedly, this poison doesn't melt the opponent like it does in the cutscenes, so it's one of those scenarios where fighting game Fong is underpowered from story mode Fong. He has some great moves. I love the way he flies through the air to drop purple poison balls on his opponent. His double projectiles and poison carpet attacks are fabulous, and his crouching heavy punch and stand medium kick keep me glued to the screen. His melting poison technique would come in handy during the winter. In fact, I think I've already used it. Only I call mine ice melt and I buy it at Walmart. Does that count? And you can buy it in a two pack. Ah, which goes with his favorite number. I guess I really am channeling Fang during December through March. It would be cool though to have purple hands that glow, but that would be more for Halloween and I wouldn't want to melt the candy. So strike that last thought. And that's exactly why he has the large sleeves. He can also use them to fly like a bird, which I get why he does that symbolically, but I don't know why he doesn't fly more often. <laughs> Number one is a character who went above and beyond with poison attacks in fighting games. She took what was unique about another poison character in her franchise and revolutionized it further. I couldn't even resist putting her on the thumbnail. Number one, Aki from Street Fighter. Aki was a student of Fong, replacing him in Street Fighter 6, but she took his intensity way past the ceiling. Aki came from an impoverished background, fighting for her life in the streets, but when Fong saw great potential in her to learn the poison arts, she easily became a star. She could kill any lesser enemies with ease, only held back by Fong not wanting her to kill frivolously. And Aki seems like one of those fighters who likes to play with her food. She has an obsession with Fong, and it's partially ambiguous if she loves him or if she just takes her interests to the extreme and really appreciates what he taught her. But if anything, it seems like a one-sided love interest on Aki's side. In the end, it doesn't really matter since Fong a minor character in this story, and if Aki gets her eye on you, you're her new interest. Her spiked gauntlets allow her to do some sort of poison acupuncture, where she pokes your pressure points with poison to do anything from taking off a bit from your health bar to making you pass out, and let's assume it's just passed out. Of course, if you get hit point blank from her, then you never stood a chance. In a regular battle, she's gotta work to give you the poison. Her similarities to Fong involve her base plan to poison the 
opponent, where she has some attacks that jab them with the poison, and then they lose health over a period of time, and you can mix in her more eccentric movements and backbends for combos that end with the poison jabs. And the jabs are not always close range finger pokes, sometimes they're poison strings that can extend half screen from her talons, and other times they're like Fong's projectiles, but as a singular poison bubble, so you can pressure your opponent while you wait for it to reach them and it pops, or you can pop it early. If you want to make a mess, just throw the bubble on the floor instead for an extra trap. But while Fong just let the poison do its own thing after it hit the opponent, Aki does more to remix the poison beyond simply burning the opponent's health bar over time. When your opponent is poisoned, you can use certain attacks from Aki to detonate the poison, where it explodes in your opponent's body, causing them to bounce up, allowing you to get in unique combo extenders. Aki has a lot of customization options with her combos, since there are loads more possibilities if she lands a hit when they're already poisoned. Not to mention, her movement allows her to get in against the opponent in unexpected ways, specifically her low profile snake slither, where she just crawls on the floor on her back, basically under any projectile. She can attack out of it, but the stance itself is a great visualization on how wacky she is, both in playstyle and personality. I love watching her attack. She looks so stylish with that hair and sleek skin tight black scale costume as she slinks and slithers seamlessly from one attack move to the other. And those beautiful purple deadly claw like nails! She slices and dices poison into her opponents with such precision. She's her own complete set of Ginsu knives. She's got it all, from throws, projectiles, whips, and poison strings. And those mesmerizing eyes, kind of like a mood ring on steroids. Ultimately, one of Aki's biggest appeals is all her flavor, metaphorically speaking. Her actual flavor is poison and should not be consumed. Every voice line, pose, taunt is flowing with personality. I love the way she wiggles her fingers when she walks, like, yeah, you don't want to mess with any of this. I also like that she refers to her level 3 super move as her magna opus, so if you do that twice in a match, it means that she's constantly outdoing her best. So with a venomous personality, toxic combos, and a lethal playstyle, Aki is the best poison character in fighting games. Now, what did you think? Were all these characters extra lethal, or could some of them have been washed out with soap and water? Who are some of your favorite poison fighting game characters, whether we discussed them or not? Let us know in the comments! Anyway, thank you all for watching, and we will see you in the next video!